So the agenda for the talk, um, the scale of big data anyway, and then provide a um, rationale for why we build Apache TV. Then go into some of the new features that we are building as a part of uh, the uh, 0.8 release of TV that's under development right now, and time permitting, we'll do a few uh, Q and A. The let me. The scale of big data eBay, we have 157 million um, buyers on eBay, active buyers, and uh, 25 million sell uh, sellers. That's one of the key things that differentiates us from our competitor up north in terms of the number of uh, sellers that we have on eBay. And uh, all the things that we do within the analytics is based around, um, at least this year, one of the things, the things that we are focusing on is how do we make the sellers more efficient? What do we do to let them sell more on eBay? The, uh, the other interesting fact is there is 800 million listings on eBay, and a big portion of what we do in analytics is to uh, take a look at this unstructured listings that we have and create a structured pattern, catalog around, uh, around these listings. Every uh, week we have 8.8 .8 million uh, listings that get added. And a big portion, as more for more and more people this is true, there's a big portion of eBay's revenue is actually transitioning over into the mobile. It's today, it's close to 40% that actually generates the eBay revenue. Again, let me complete the door. Um, so the type of data that we are capturing within um, within the analytics environment, am I covering that step? So the type of data that we are capturing, you can classify them into two broad categories. There is one is uh, behavioral data. This is uh, the click stream analysis. What is the user doing on the site? The um, the items that he is looking at, the um, options that he is they are bidding on, the um, the number of shopping carts that are available. The second piece of data that we actually look at is the transactional data. This is the um, this is the actual transactions that happen within uh, within the site, right? This is the number of um, items that you bought, the number of items that was listed, the changes to the auctions that have happened. The way we capture the uh, behavioral data is uh, is through our own uh, screening mechanism. That's uh, that's called Pulsar. That is also something that eBay had open source. And the transactional data was a lot batch-oriented before. Now there is a big transition from the batch-oriented way in which we were capturing it to um, uh, to real time by going to Golden Gate. A lot of the changes that are happening within the Oracle databases are captured through Golden Gate events and published to a centralized bus from which the analytics environment goes and um, listens to them. A little bit about the um, about the uh, Hadoop environment at eBay. We started off in um, in 2000 um, in 2007. We had our own nice 10 node cluster. We have grown a lot from there. Today we have uh, 10,000 nodes of Hadoop, more than 150,000 uh, ports, 170 plus uh, petabytes of data, and 2,000 users um, on the Hadoop system. The uh, set of things, uh, we are using Hadoop for all the things that you can think of, the, the classic things that you would be uh, doing within an analytics environment. There is a merchandising team that wants to know what's the right set of um, in inventory items that we need to have on the eBay listings. There is the search that is using a lot of uh, the behavior and anal analytics to figure out the right search, um, uh, the ordering of the search results. There is a data sciences, both in terms of search sciences and shipping sciences, that those are big users of the Hadoop environment. There is marketing, which uh, the team that basically targets emails based on the user behavior. Uh, it, it has gradually been growing. The amount of um, workloads that we have in Hadoop have, have constantly changed over the years. With that as the context, what I would like to do is introduce um, introduce Kylie. Um, the name of this project, we got this from a mythical uh, Chinese uh, character. It is a part of uh, four uh, uh, character, four uh, animals the, that that form 
found this uh, this particular mythical set, they including uh, a, a dragon, uh, a phoenix, and uh, and a turtle. But the another interesting reason why we chose the name Kylie is that the Kylie is supposed to be a very long-lived creature. They they live for close to two thousand years. And our hope is that if we get even one hundredth of the life of Kylie, this project would be really successful. <laughs> we uh, have been working on this for more than a year and a half. Uh, we started. Uh, we open sourced this uh, project on October um, October of two thousand fourteen, and it got accepted into the Apache incubation in November. We are actually working towards. Uh, graduation to a top level project. I know there is Henry. Henry is actually helping us. We have a lot of good mentors on Apache that are helping us uh, to, to the graduation process. So uh, to give a certain, uh, 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 some more context on why we went about building this, like, uh, like any of the large enterprises, we had um, in, we had commercial OLAP solutions that we use. We internally use micro strategies, and uh, we, we were hitting the limits in terms of the cube sizes. For example, the behavioral data that we have, we capture close to 20 terabytes of behavioral data that moves into our analytics um, environment on a daily basis. The cube sizes that we have, we're uh, running into uh, into uh, terabytes or hundreds of terabytes pretty soon, and we were hitting into limits with what micro strategy could support us. So we started off building Kylie with uh, four, four different goals. One is um, it should have the ability to build cubes on uh, billions of nodes. Um, it should support the standard SQL interface. A lot of the analysts within eBay, we have close to a 3,000 analyst community, and a lot of them are comfortable with and familiar with the SQL environment. It should, and one of the things that we started off is let's actually build this on commodity um, hardware, right? Let's not take it dependently. We could have said, okay, let's build this on Teradata and appliance model. But we said the, the best place to build right now is on top of Hadoop. And that was the genesis for um, letting, for starting on the, um, on the Kylie project. And for the last um, for the last one year, we have seen good traction. We have uh, close to 25 plus um, the contributors, uh, contributors, and a very active dev dating plus. The uh, it is in production, of course, in eBay, but Baidu Max also has this in production right now. You'll see a lot of uh, Chinese companies in there because the bulk of the team that is developing this is based off Shanghai. We have Huawei and Bloomberg Law and British Gas. All of them are actually built uh, prototypes. They are close to uh, transitioning them into production. We've, we've been actively working with Microsoft um, and Tableau to integrate with their um, with their analytics products with Microsoft, with um, Power BI, and say, can, can you actually integrate whatever cube abstractions you have today in your product? Can you integrate Kylie with it? There is a lot of interest, but um, it's still work in progress. Within eBay, the set of use cases that we have, the biggest uh, cube that we have is uh, 75 billion rows, 14 terabytes of the in size and growing. We constantly, I think, are for us uh, keeping close to nine quarters worth of data is something that we do within uh, within our, uh, within eBay, and it keeps growing on a daily basis. The uh, the analysis, the traffic analysis, is around 20 billion rows, and the behavioral analysis that we do is around 1.2 billion. So uh, then going into the uh, high level architectural view of what we built with Kylie, this is this looks like any standard uh, MOLAB implementations that you have out there. Uh, like the only difference being um, it is built on top of Hadoop rather than the rest of the MOLAB engines. At the, at the bottom left, we have the data sources. Today, the only data source that we support is, um, is high, but there is interest on supporting other types of data sources. Um, there was definitely interest from one or two companies that said, I want to get the data from Oracle to build those cubes. There is um, people trying to build this off Cassandra. 
one of the interesting things that we did, we didn't do this until now, but in the point eight release, we created the data source abstraction. Now you should you should have the ability to contribute any plugins to talk to different um, uh, different data sources to get your uh, fact data. The middle co the the middle component is where we are actually doing the uh, cube building. Uh, here again today, the default implementation is a set of MapReduce jobs. It is a sequence of MapReduce jobs that uh, do the aggregations and then uh, store the cubes. The um, I mean, these, we did the same thing with this too. Is we have built an abstraction and have uh, plugins that you can build where you can replace the engine, the MapReduce based engine, with any other engine. And one of the things that's actively going on right now is if we replace it with Spark, is that uh, it would it give you a, a faster way to build the queues? <coughs> and then finally, there is a storage at the storage, which is now we have built the queues, we have built all the aggregations. Now you need to store those aggregations into a data store. And uh, we chose HPACE for a lot of a lot of reasons that which I'm going to uh, in the next few slides. And there is again an interest in terms of say, can we actually build um, other types of uh, storage uh, layer for Kylie than just HPACE? So one of the asks that we have right now is um, do participate in the um, and contribute to these plugins. We believe that if you keep adding more plugins, the Kylie as an environment will become that much more rich. And then finally, the main component, the, one of the core components is your query engine. This query engine is built on as a set of extensions to CalSight. This uh, talks to the aggregations that we have stored within HPs. I will be going a bit more, drilling a bit more into the details of uh, the storage. The uh, way the data gets, the your cubes get stored within uh, within HPACE, the, you have your standard uh, stat schemas, you have a bunch of facts and dimensions. The fact and dimension metadata is, um, it, it's stored within HPACE and the, the pre-aggregations, pre-aggregations associated with those facts and dimensions are also stored. The, uh, the row definition, uh, the row key formats, the way we store the rows, the row key format is First, you need to identify the particular uh, cube that you are working on, the cuboid IDs, and the set of dimensions on which we are doing the aggregations. That defines your row key that you are storing in HPACE. And the row values are all the aggregations that we have pre-computed, and um, they're stored uh, next to that particular row key. Drilling in a little bit more detail, this is, um, the, the, if you are familiar with some of the data warehousing, uh, let, uh, data warehousing literature, when you think of cubes, there, there is a concept of a base cube, a base uh, cube point, and which talks about the um, the completely unsummarized data. This is your raw fact data at, at the base, and at the top is the um, the apex cube, which is the completely summarized data. And there is different levels. There is different le uh, levels from the base cube to the apex cube. For example, at, at the bottom, there, it gives you an example. At the base cube, you have four dimensions, the item, the time, item, location, and supplier. There is no aggregation out there. There would be one value associated with those four dimensions. When you go to the uh, level D2 cuboid, you are looking at the time, item, and location um, the values are fixed, and then you are aggregating over the you are aggregating over the um, uh, the supplier dimension, and so on and so forth. Right? The um, the row key formats that we were talking the, uh, the row formats that we were talking about. What it translates into is. Each of these uh, individual um, individual circles that we have is a cuboid, and each cuboid translates into um, a table in HPACE, and those the, the format for the rows correspond to the um, the set of cuboids that you are storing. And a data cube is a lattice of all of these cuboids stored within HPACE. Then transitioning over into now you've got the cube, you have stored the cube inside each place. You need to you need to have the ability to query the cube. Um, the way we do the do the queries again, we basically took a dependency on uh, CalSight. This 
CalSight is an Apache project. It is a general purpose uh, SQL execution engine and it's very highly extensible. It has multiple extension points. One of the extension points is um, in the SQL parser, you have the ability to talk to a metadata store and validate the metadata for the SQL. The second layer that it has is the query optimizer. You have the ability to plug in your own rules because you know how you have actually stored your data. It has the ability to uh, plug in the rules that will allow you to optimize your queries. For example, you are looking for a query that says, show me all the employees whose age is less than, less than 50. If my age base actually has the ability to go and find out all the uh, employees with age less than 50, if the calcite will not be computing it, it will be handing it off to age base. And that is something that the query optimizer is aware of. And then in the third layer, you would have um, the, um, the data storage APIs. From the data storage API, it's typically given a key, get me a value associated with the key, or given a range, a range query, get me all the results, the enumerated results that associated with that range query. So what we did with this kind of was implementing these set of plugins. I won't go into a lot of detail there, but one of the things that we have is um, the, we implemented a metadata SPI. We implemented the set of relational operators. A relational operator implementation, your selects, made clauses, group bytes, essentially say, given a select table, it goes and finds out the specific edge base table, you, the cube that you need to talk to. The um, translates the SQL into a set of storage API calls. And we also implemented a set of uh, SQL functions. For example, um, the, the count distinct uh, is implemented as count distinct is one of the most expensive things to implement if you are trying to do it over a 25, 25 billion row data set. What this does is uses an algorithm called hyperlog log, which is an approximation, but mostly a good enough approximation in most of the cases. We also implemented some uh, date related functions, for example, a uh, quarter, the notion of a quarter is something that we uh, natively understand within Kali. We implemented those. And uh, I've been given the five minute thing. Let me rush through a few. The, the things I wanted to talk about was what we are doing. Um, the, all of this is good, but most of the whole the, the app system is only useful if you have the ability to build the queue, the, build the queues in a reasonable amount of time. Because of the combinatorial explosion, if you have a massive amount of, uh, if you have a large number of dimensions, if the cardinality for the dimensions is large, you it could take forever to go build those queues, and then your null solution essentially is useless. So what I have in the next set of slides would be all the things that we did to optimize the building of the queues. Right? One of the uh, one of the simplest examples for the optimization is the notion of um, aggregate groups. When you do group bytes, a lot of times what happens is you are doing uh, you are doing group bytes on say you have five dimensions. You have you are doing group bytes on a set of those dimensions, and they are not doing them all together. For example, you are doing group bytes on time and location, or you are doing uh, uh, group bytes on time and category, but you are not doing it in all, all the three. What this allows you to do is say let's build the aggregates for these two dimensions. Let's build the aggregates for these two dimensions. The, uh, if you have all the three dimensions in your queries, then we will compute those values on demand. So that's the concept of partial queues. What this talks about is the uh, in the previous case, we had, the user had to explicitly specify the definition of the aggregate groups, and that helped us uh, that helped us in terms of how the queues got built. Here, the system is actually intelligent and enough. It goes looks at the cardinality of the dimensions and then tries to build the queue, it tries to find out the most optimal set that it can build um, from the set of dimensions that we have. The, uh, the other thing that we do is uh, is what we call as incremental builds. The queues themselves are immutable. Once a cube is, once a cube segment, we call it a cube segment that gets built, we never go and update that cube segment. Right? So the initial queue, the initial uh, queue build takes all the data that's available and then builds the, uh, builds the queue. The subsequent things, it's refreshes. You can schedule, you can schedule the refreshes that you want, and then there's multiple cube segments that get built on every refresh that you do every time you read on the map reduce job. The query engine is smart enough to go and say when I'm issuing a SQL query, it knows that it has to go across all these cube segments that correspond to this cube and then go execute the query. The um, 
I can actually skip this. We actually uh, we did a lot of improvements in the in the way in which we built the cubes. Uh, that that improved the performance of the cube built by close to uh, uh, close to 30 to 50 percent in terms of the builds. Uh, but let me skip that. Let me go into uh, into the speeding aspect of it, right? So uh, the uh, the uh, improvements that we did with the queue building allowed us to uh, allowed us to start thinking in terms of a cube is not um, a cube is as as entity of a set of segments a set of segments and uh, once we made that leap that said a cube is a collection of a set of segments we uh, with the point A belief what we what uh, tidy has become is a consumer of uh, Kafka topics. It starts subscribing to the messages within the uh, within the Kafka topic. These are uh, these are stored in memory with an inverted index to the fact tables. Over a period of time, as and when the data ages, they start they start moving into the queue segments. These queue segments uh, we have different windows of granularity. So these queue segments would be in the in the granularity of uh, minutes to hours to days. And there is there is background jobs that we have that keep running that will actually build this. I, I see I see the sign, so let me let me finish. I think I'm mostly there. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to talk about was the um, was the use case that we um, that we have implemented. The what we have is something known as the SEO uh, dashboard within email. This one tells us the efficiency with uh, of the different search engines, the traffic that different search engines are driving into email. Uh, before it used to take us close to 20, 32 hours to get this data. With the Kylie streaming and a lot of upstream um, enhancements that we did, now we have this data available within uh, within 15 minutes. Within 15 minutes of the traffic appearing on the site, we have uh, a dashboard that tells us of the, all these different dimensions. Uh, where is the where is it coming from? And across all these all these measures, the set of measures across these dimensions rolled up and available for query to the analysts. That uh, essentially concludes my talk. Um, any questions? When you, do, when you did your optimization, did you do it kind of in the abstract manner or did you do it based on analytics of actual uh, queries and, and you know what I mean? So um, are you thinking did we do um, the SQL optimizer, did we have histograms uh, to actually raise but the answer is no. So I think what we have right now is um, is basic optim. I think the usually a SQL optimizer, the Oracle SQL optimizer, is 20 years worth of effort. We are probably in like six months of optimization. It will probably we can probably keep spending our lifetime on trying to optimize these queries, so it will be work in progress. Analytics analytics. Yes, exactly. We should capture certain types of histogram data. I don't think we're doing that. Any other questions? So the question was: the cubes that we define are immutable. So do you do a merge of uh, in-memory um, in-memory tables with, uh, and the um, immutable cubes? We had not done that until uh, the point eight release with the integration of uh, of Kafka, uh, Kafka and streaming support. We had not done the. Uh, Federation of queries to both the in-memory structures as well as on-disk structures. It's always never a choice, right? It is essentially the um, uh, inverted index on the fact tables maintained in memory and the uh, pre-computed uh, aggregates that are on the disk in H space and the, uh, the, the, the Kylie query engine coming in and going across these two. When we also do it, we, um, the, we are still windowing it. That is, the uh, the window that we are capturing, we capture the last ten minutes worth of uh, worth of data. That that set becomes immutable. The things that are arriving in later are not part of the query or not part of what the query engine is looking at. I don't know if that answers your question. 
So in, in the sense of it's not actively changing as and when there is messages arriving on the screen. Would you, if you go and reissue the query, would it change? The answer is no. We are still windowing it. You can think of it as micro batches that are arriving on the screen that are combined with the on-disk queues and then returning the results to you. The, today, the uh, the, optimi the SQL optimizer changes that we did, the Kylene streaming is still very freshly baked. It is not taking into account any of the um, any of the in-memory changes that we have done here. So it is it is work in progress. We have not combined the two. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. So. That particular implementation, I probably have to defer that. I have to get back to you. I, I do not know the exact data structure that we used uh, that we used for this implementation. Yes. Good question. Uh, when you're rebuilding all these queues, what is the data growth that we've seen, like the raw data versus all the pre-compute, right? The um, we uh, depending on the cardinality of the dimensions, it grows to. Um, there are places, there are times where it was 10 to 15, 10x to uh, 10x or more. That is the that is one of the things. Once you notice those, we immediately go into the notion of aggregate groups. In the aggregate groups, you usually do the um, one high, high cardinality dimension with the one low cardinality dimension. If you have two high cardinality dimensions, you you will you will get into massive explosion. So that is one of the reasons why we are saying go the streaming route too. Is if I'm uh, if I'm building. Um, a large number of small queues, I can do the aggregates much faster than, uh, and I have uh, I have a 2,000 node Hadoop cluster where I can go and distribute the work across all of these versus trying to do it at the end of the day and using up all the resources. Yes, yes, that is the trade-off. The, the trade-off that you have is the um, the more the number of uh, queue segments that you have, the more impact it has on the latency. You have to keep queuing that back and forth. That's that's in essence what the, that's the uh, power of Kylie is that we have the ability to uh, dial the lever, saying I don't care about the space, I care about the latency of the queries, or I care about the space, so I'm okay with uh, lower latency on my queries. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> The, uh, there is no the queues are in the There is no update. So the only thing that we do is merge operations. So there is scheduled merge operations, and uh, they, uh, it's a uh, the the uh, this an dynamic switch to to this. Okay. There are some ways to make it like uh, available for. Is it there is. I think making it available queues is a is a is a lot challenging exercise. If you want to do that, then all the consistency and uh, requirements come. <laughs> Else? There are no other questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you.